phone one everyone uh, hopefully uh, you have learned our previous video and you have just uh, we have done through this uh, the previous video to understand what is control system and what is the applications of this and how can it be benefited for you now i am going to discuss about the module 2 as i have already given in the last in the last lecture video that module 2 i will discuss about the basic terminology right so what is this basic terminology means means first of all by the subject you see engineering you know the point i will tell you this is known as control system so before going to discuss about the control system you have to know about the idea of the system the terminology means what is system everyone must be uh, because in the earlier semesters uh, because this is the course normally designed for fifth or sixth semester definitely you have learned in the last four and four semesters what is system i'll tell you so a system is comprised of different interconnected uh, equipments uh, which are mutually uh, uh, connected mutually and interconnected to give a complete setup such that they can convert one kind of energy to another kind of energy right that is a system because for example any uh, I am I am talking about this system is like this so what is the function of the system conversion of energy from one part to another part and I will call it input input maybe any kind of energy and this is I can call it output so input is converted to output right so input means different kinds of energy maybe electric energy maybe mechanical energy maybe hydraulic energy maybe pneumatic energy these are the energies to be converted into output so how this energy to be converted from input to output that is the question so that is the function of the system and how it can for example a basic system example is i can call it thermometer what is the function of thermometer all you know what is it this actually we are the temperature maybe body temperature maybe object temperature maybe body it actually measures the temperature so what is your input this is your system right so this is your output so what is the input temperature what should it give temperature so how this question comes the question comes automatically how this can be system interconnection of the uh, different mutually interconnected equipments we may call it sensor I will give another sensor what is the function of sensor it senses and give some output because thermometer is one kind of temperature sensor what is the function of it it actually takes the body temperature now it actually converts into some volt voltage means temperature to voltage this is a temperature sensor and once you you will use it at a system definitely there will be some voltage to temperature converter again or some calibrator is there because once you get the temperature so that is converted into some voltage and voltage is converted into temperature and that temperature is to be displayed so these are the three kinds of sensor in a thermometer right sensor is maybe thermistor maybe thermocouple or maybe artery different kinds of sensor you know so these are the different kind of sensor and that works defining some of the say for example uh, if, if I can say it thermocouple kind of thermometer so thermocouple what is this if there is a temperature defines between the two end then this gives some change of voltages say for example if corresponding to some temperature you get some voltage but at the output the, the, the level of the person what you see from the thermometer you see this is either uh, 98.04 degree centigrade uh, Fahrenheit or 99 degree Fahrenheit or 100 degree Fahrenheit like this but this is not the directly giving you the temperature there is some converter in between so that is the system sensor 1 sensor 2 some LED displays there 
So these are the uh, equipments which are actually interconnected together to give you some kind of output. So that is a system. Now, when you are talking about this part, this is a block. This is the block. This is known as the block. So block means system. System means interconnection of different elements or equipments or sensors. So everything, when you will want to get some uh, output corresponding to input, definitely there will be some mathematical model that will be discussed in the uh, next part. So when you will call a block, so block means system. Maybe there are different systems which are interconnected for large power plants, large process industry, large manufacturing industries, large quality control sectors, and wherever you will get different systems are connected to it. Right? So this one system means it is having input, it is one having some output. And this output may go to some other system also. Maybe like this, you can take it another system. This you can say system one. So this is output two. Right? This output of this system is goes to the input of this system. Right? And this gives it the overall output that is known as output two. This is how the system actually uh, developed. This is the terminology basic system. Now. When you will call this is control system, what, uh, uh, what will happen then? So, when you will call this is a control system, that means what is to be controlled? What is to be controlled? That is known as the control variable. Right? So, this is your system. Now, you can relate this system with some combinations of different instruments. This is your output, and this is your input this system will be called control system this can be control system once this output is at desired level desired level desired level means what desired level means first of all you have to set your desired level for example we are calling the example of air condition AC. What is this? This gives you comfort by either reduction of the temperature or increasing of the temperature. What is this? Say in a AC, what happens? This is your input. Right? Now, input means you set temperature is equal to 22 degrees centigrade, right? That means what you want, we want to get the input temperature at 22 degrees centigrade. Now, uh, this is the function of AC. This AC gets this information that the function of this is to get the temperature of the room at 22 degrees centigrade. Now, say for example, initially output, say 25 degrees centigrade. So this is not your desired value. What should it be? It should be 22 degrees centigrade. So it operates of your of its own, and in such a way such that this here you will get 22 degrees centigrade, right? So what will get 22 degrees centigrade? That means this is your output. If this can be done automatically, this is known as the system, which is control system. So what is the function of it? Basically, what we will get? We will get to get the desired temperature, sorry, desired value of the uh, output by using some controlling function. Or there may be some changes of the input, definitely. Next step, I would like to say that if there is a change of our input, say, for example, input is uh, varying, input is varying, but your desired thing is that. 22 degrees centigrade is your desired input maybe input may be what that is the outside temperature outside temperature may be 30 degrees centigrade outside your house you want to get 22 degrees centigrade it may be 35 degrees centigrade you want to get 22 degrees centigrade it may be 40 degrees centigrade you want to get 22 degrees centigrade so what does it mean there is a variation of the input there may be variation of the input but the control system is to be designed in such a way such that you will get the desired output.
So that is the beauty of this search. And that can be done with some interconnected instruments. That can be known as controller, that can be known as actuator, that can be known as somewhere this system can be known as plant and like this. So that is why I uh, I have given this module name as basic timing measures. This all because whenever you will have to design the control system, what you have to do, you have to get the desired value of the output value, desired value at a constant value, irrespective of the changes of the input. Maybe there is a change of input, and this is known as the steady state value. Steady state value means definitely a control system is not being able to give you instant desired value. It takes a few seconds or few minutes depending upon the design of the control system. That means, for example, this is your AC. I am taking the same example. This is your input range, maybe 30 degree to 40 degree centigrade. This is very, and you have to get 22 degree centigrade at the output. Right? So, when the temperature is 30 degree centigrade, definitely 22 degree centigrade, it will get because if you can observe, you see that once you switch on your AC, suddenly or not at the same instant, you will get in the 22 degree centigrade. It takes 10 seconds, 5 seconds. Uh, one minute like that, depending upon the capability of the AC, depending upon the other parameters. That means whether the, uh, uh, say for example, your door or windows are open or not. Okay, if the windows and doors are open, then definitely it will take much more time. So that is why this type of output is known as the steady state output. Steady state output means after certain time interval, uh, after certain time of switch on your input. But switch on this system, this system output will be get uh, obtained as your desired value, right? So, this is the desired value at steady state value. So, uh, what are the different terminologies to get? Uh, we we learn input, output, system, control system, desired value, right? When the output is uh, obtained, that is the desired value of the output is obtained, that is known as the uh, control variable, right? And to control the system, what are the different terminologies are coming that I am going to discuss. So next time I will discuss about this uh, two terminologies. One is open loop control and second is closed loop control. Right. So what is the difference between these two and how these two now names are given like one open loop, one closed loop. So I am giving two examples. This is your system, and one more uh, terminology I would like to say uh, this system is known as plant. This is somewhere can be termed as plant, right? So this is your input, and this is your output. That much you know, right? What is this? Input is coming going through the system, and you will be getting the output, and this is your plant. Now what happens, for example, I am exam giving example of uh, a bike, very common example. You are riding a bike without speedometer. All you know this function of speedometer. When you ride a bike, what happens? Two wheeler. There is an accelerator, maybe in the in your hand and maybe in your leg and the, there is a brake. And this speedometer shows you in front of you that what is the speed currently you are biking. Right? That, that may be 30 km per hour, that may be 40 km per hour, maybe 50 km per hour. Right? So, once you accelerate this system, that means increasing the accelerometer, what happens? You are getting higher speed. But you you are using this bike without speedometer. I can mention this term very important because maybe that is uh, uh, also uh, also uh, valid for car also without speedometer. And what happens here? You are just pressing the accelerometer in the bike, right? So bike gets started and bike is getting high speed, right? And uh, it may be 40 kilometer per hour. It may be 60 kilometer per hour. It may be high speed also. So what happens? 
if you don't have any speedometer so you cannot get the idea of the speed when you are riding the bike right? and what happens say in a certain time interval after after, after, after certain interval of time you have uh, press the accelerator again and again and it gives you say 150 kilometer per hour and that that may be uh, actually uh, uh, assume that speed is higher but exactly the speed is not being calculated by your mind by your head so what happens you cannot uh, control the speed once you cannot control the speed there is a risk of damaging the bike damaging of the life and all these things but if the speedometer is connected what happens if the speedometer is connected basically this this here you are you are sitting on this bike and speedometer is in front of you you are accelerating that means giving a high acceleration you are getting the speed and what happens you, you just uh, loop into the speedometer and see your desire is that if the 40 km per hour is sufficient then i can just control the speed at 40 km and if the speedometer gives you 41 km per hour speed what happens your brain gives you the signal that you need to decelerate this speed that means you just uh, 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 just uh, put off your legs or hands in such a way that the acceleration uh, button is decelerated and speed is reduced so by the same example i can see you this is a kind of open loop and closed loop control at the same time what happens if this is without speedometer you are increasing the speed you are getting the higher speed but here sitting here you cannot sense the speed actually you cannot get your desired value because there is no feedback from output to input because what happens in the output side because this is this is a speedometer kind of application say for example uh, in a process plan think of the process plan or uh, power plan what happens there is a control room i can see you so in case of any process plan there is a control room right control room situated in a far distance from field instruments these are the field instruments situated here so level uh, sensor pressure gauge flow meter temperature sensor all these kinds of sensors are there so what happens every time the uh, that, that means the parameter readings that's level pressure flow temperature is coming to the control room and if certain in, in a sense that if there is a, a signal of uh, failure that means for example level of any uh, level sensor for any field instrument say 25 centimeter is your desired level what happens if uh, say information is failed that means the signal is not coming from this level center to the control room what happens this level may increase to 50 centimeter say for example temperature is reached at 100 degree centigrade if this temperature rises to 150 degree centigrade what happens the whole production will be damaged so you need to get the information about the output sitting in the control room so what happens actually the block diagram should be like this this is your system this is your output and every time this output signal is to be taken to the input such that sitting here in the input side you can predict what is going on in the output and you can give signal in such a way such a way so that uh, this output cannot go behind this for example if the temperature of the output of any system or any system uh, it goes above the 100 degree centigrade maybe 150 degree centigrade say what happens if the signal comes to the input side so what this input side uh, members will do they will just turn off the heater and automatically temperature comes down right so that is the purpose of feedback this is what we call it feedback and this kind of control system is called a feedback control system because and we are we get a loop like structure you see so this is the closed loop system and this is the advantage of the closed loop system because this can give you more stable system more stable in the sense that means your desired value of temperature the output system may be 100 degree centigrade then maybe varies from 99.5 degree centigrade to 100.5 degree centigrade that can be variation right that can be allowed but if the temperature is below uh, 80 degree centigrade or above 150 degree centigrade that is not 
desired. So feedback in every time and corresponding actions because when the feedback, say for example, uh, as this example, you can see, say 100 degrees centigrade is your desired value input side. That means what is this? There is a heater definitely, right? There is definitely heater that gives you a temperature 100 degrees centigrade, and this uh, temperature of the heater is measured by some sensor, right? Now. If the sensor gives you temperature which is greater than 100 degrees centigrade, that is not your desired value, but gives you there is also a sensor which senses this signal. Definitely, this feedback part there is a feedback sensor. This feedback sensor senses this output, and this gives you information to the input that the sensor output is not up to the desired level and above the desired level. But it will do. It will definitely gives some signal to heater. And automatically, heater will be switched off. Heater will be switched off. And when the heater will be switched off, the temperature of the output side goes down. Goes down, right? When it reaches 100 degrees centigrade, then again, this feedback sensor, this is a feedback sensor, I, I tell you, this is a feedback sensor which actually collects this information and this goes to input and input desired level is set as 100 degree centigrade now when this sensor gives you 100 degree centigrade results here what will get this will again turn off the or uh, just um, just uh, below the 100 degree centigrade actually the heater will be turned on and again the temperature will rise to 100 degree centigrade and this is the balancing mechanism which is done by this closed loop control system yes uh, actually uh, this is the uh, example of the open loop control system and closed loop uh, control system. So these are the again uh, two terminologies. Okay, so system input output uh, feedback path control system and open loop control system and closed loop control system. Now when we we'll call control we'll open loop that means input system and output. When we we'll call the control system closed that means there is a feedback path and also where this is actually comparing there is definitely another block is there right. So that is block is to be incorporated. Now, this is the structure of the closed loop system. Closed loop control system structure. What is this? This is input. Say our input is desired as say 100 degrees centigrade. So you should get 100 degrees centigrade as the output. So, so what is there in the system? There is some sensors and heaters and all these things, right? So within the system. And we may call it planet. Now, what happens? You switch on the system and you get the temperature is below 100 degrees centigrade, maybe less than 100 degrees centigrade. That is sensed by this feedback sensor, and this is minus, this is known as summer or error block. What is the function of it? Here, the desired signal is having the value of 100 degrees centigrade. Now, feedback sensor senses. This is below 100 degrees centigrade, maybe 80 degrees centigrade. So this is plus and minus. So input is desired at 100 degrees centigrade. This is minus 80 degrees centigrade. That means there is a gap in between the input and output. That means the desired value and the output you are getting. So what is this? This error signal passes through this some another block. So definitely there will be some another block which will correct uh, this error. What is the error? The that is the another definition that is input minus output at every instant of time. The difference between the input output is not a error. One error is very small or negligibly small, then you see input is nearly equal to output. So that is your desired specifications. Now, uh, if this desired value that is, is not required, I mean, actually, you will, you will not get the desired value. What happens? This error is maximum. When the error is maximum, this error goes through some another block that is known as controller. Controller may be defined kinds of controller, proportional controller, integrator, integration controller, uh, PI controller, PID controller, different kinds of controllers are there that I will discuss in detail later on. Now, this controller takes actions according to the error. And what is the function of the controller? Controller actually takes actions on the error E. This is known as E. When controller either P type, P I type or P I T type takes actions on this error, what happens? This generates some signal. 
say for example in this case i am talking about a heater so when the controller thinks that our controller actually getting the signal that there is an error what is the controller will do controller will uh, place some signal and that will turn off the heater that will be heater right your system may be heater comprises of different sensors on this so who will turn off this heater so heater turn off is a mechanical process or electrical process that means there must be some switch which should be off or switch should be on depending upon here your output input signals and all these things right so when you are uh, applying some input and you are getting that means heater is on you are getting the output which is greater than 100 degrees centigrade it gives feedback to the input side and error is there once error is there controller will take some action and this will give some signal that signal will actually actuate the plant actuate the plant actuate the plant means there is some actuator which will turn off the heater or turn off the heater that is known as the actuator so that is very much important in case of proper system so that is the actuator actuator actuates some kind of signal which will take the action and that radiator is known as then uh, manipulated radiator right so in all i will like to show you a closed loop control basic structure block so this is the basic structure of the closed loop control system this is your input this is your block which actually uh, uh, getting generated that there is error is generating here and this is the controller which takes action on the error here the error variable this goes to the actuator which actually the mechanical uh, pressure heat and all different kinds of uh, there may be some uh, valve in case of level sensor also flow sensor also there that, that, that can be valve that is the mechanical arrangement so this will actuate the signal and here the variable this is input variable this is desired output variable or control variable this is known as manipulated variable this is manipulated variable and this is normally denoted by c this is normally denoted by r this is error is denoted by e this is normally denoted by m right these are the normal specifications and this is your feedback sensor and for closed loop system this feedback sensor is must and uh, there are certain advantage of using this feedback mechanism because once you uh, want to get any system to be stable the feedback is must and this kind of feedback is you see this is negative so this is known as the negative feedback this is negative feedback and if you want to get the positive feedback then definitely your output will be increasing above the desired value so this will not give you the stable system for stability negative feedback is required also uh, regarding some bandwidth gain sensitivity this negative feedback plays very important role right so uh, bandwidth gain and sensitivity these are the parameters which are the uh, very important and improved performance of the system is getting improved related to the stability because once you design any system and that is not stable that is not uh, of use uh, that is having no use because that will not go going to give you the desired value because for example you see uh, the temperature of any any system is above uh, say for example you want to go and get a uh, plastic uh, model of a, a, a using plastic in a, a model using plastic but if the temperature is very much important when the temperature is fluctuate more than 0.5 degrees centigrade that uh, the structure of the model will be damaged and you will get the scrap version of it and so the customer will not actually be satisfied with that product so company will be having no use of this uh, designing this kind of product right so so this is the basic terminal is we see input variable output variable manipulated variable error signal feedback path controller actuated and open loop control system and closed loop control system uh, now in a our uh, next uh, class i will discuss uh, two real life examples of open loop control system and closed loop control system because uh, once you learn uh, how is this open loop control system is actually using in practical life and closed loop control system also using in practical life there will be uh, two uh, industrial versions 
uh, our open loop system and closed loop system we will be discussing in the, the next lecture. Thank you.